He has been called by David Horowitz simply the best political comedian working in America today, while his serious insights draw the word brilliant from everyone from Dennis Prager, Rush Limbaugh, Dennis Miller, and even me, Lou Desmond, just from speaking with him in the green room. <laughs> Evan's book, The Kindergarten Feet and How the Modern Liberal Thinks, number one in paperback on Amazon's commentary and opinion. Please welcome Evan Sayet. I am uh, in the unenviable position of following a pastor who gets a standing ovation. <laughs> and you really didn't have to do that, because the great thing about religious folks, about Christians, is even if you didn't, he'd have to forgive you. <laughs> I'm also in the unenviable position of preceding Dinesh D'Souza, <laughs> which means I'm standing between you and what you really want to see. <laughs> So I will make you a deal. The more you love me, the shorter I will do. Because as, as, as Lou said in the introduction, at least I think he did, my career is divided exactly down the middle. Half the time I am a political comedian. Half the time I'm a rather serious political pundit which means that if I decide this evening to do my comedy or this afternoon, I might be unholy, which will anger the pastor. <laughs> and no matter how brilliant I may be, I'm no Dinesh D'Souza. So where do I go from there? Let me, let me tell you, I, the mandate that I've been given is to discuss a call to action. What it is that we can do after this entire day of hearing the wrongs of the left chronicled, what is it that we can do? And the answer is everything. Everything. This is war, folks. It may be war by a different name, it may be war fought in a different way, the way the Cold War was a different war than World War II. And I, mean, I think World War II, and some people spent their time building the atomic bomb. You don't have to do that. Some do, some put things like this together and what a great day this is, is it not? Yeah. And some say we're just preaching to the choir. I've got nothing against preaching to the choir. Just because you know the tune doesn't mean you understand the gospel. And take from what you've learned and take it out in the field because what we need to do is to be the media. They own the mainstream media. They can hit a million people at once with their lies. We have to be a million people telling one person the truth, one at a time. And let me be absolutely clear about something. I do not believe the Republicans are right about everything. It would be ridiculous to think one person is always right, much less a collection of 50 or 100 million people. Of course the Republicans aren't right about everything. I'd be childish to believe the Republicans are right about everything. What I believe is that the Democrats are wrong about everything. <laughs> For it, and it's not because they're stupid in the typical sense. This is something that I had to think through because I grew up on the left. All right? I wasn't a, 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 an intellectual liberal. It wasn't like I thought through liberalism and compared it to conservatism and came down on the side of liberalism. I was not an intellectual liberal. In fact, there is no such thing. <laughs> I knew growing up what every liberal knows, Democrats are good and Republicans are evil. But it's almost a rain man ideology, Democrat good, Republican evil, I don't like evil, he's not good. <laughs> Democrats like peace, Republicans like war, they like war, war's too loud. <laughs> Democrats like air, Republicans don't like the air, they think they need the air, I like air. <laughs> 
You know, Lou was asking, are they evil or are they stupid? And the answer is, many are both or either. But then there are a whole bunch in the middle who have just never heard from a conservative what a conservative believes. Where would they have heard it? Think about this. If you're my age, I, I was born in 1960. <laughs> are you doubting me? Or are you just laughing at a joke you just remembered because you're older? <laughs> but where would I have heard what a conservative believes from a conservative? Not from my liberal rabbi, not from my liberal entertainers, not from the liberal news programs. Think about this. There are three mediums, and yes, I know that's the wrong way to say the word. I prefer to say mediums. It just sounds better to me. There are three mediums that the liberal hates. Hates. Fox News. The Internet. The blogosphere. And conservative talk radio. First of all, what do these things have in common? Every single one of them is a medium where debate and discussion is part. See, liberals only do well when they lecture to you. So they do well when they have a college professor lecturing to children and then punishing them if they disagree. Take those same arguments to talk radio where you have callers challenging the host. And Air America's gone in how long? Right, they just fine on the 23-minute nightly news where, where David Gregory dictates the truth to you. Take those same arguments to the debate and discussion programs on cable, and there's only Fox News. They have cowed us into not speaking. For one thing, we're polite. And they have made debate and discussion something that is ugly. You're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe, you're a xenophobe. They have actually turned thinking into a hate crime. <laughs> the concept behind this is that anything you believe, anything I believe, anything anybody believes, is going to have been so tainted by your personal prejudices the fact that you're white, the fact that you're black, the fact that you're tall, the fact that you're short, that you're fat, you're skinny, you're, you're rich, you're poor, anything you believe is going to be just a reflection of your prejudices. Therefore, the only way not to be a bigot is to never think at all. <laughs> so it's not that the liberal is stupid, it's that he has made thinking into something that he will not engage in. <laughs> He's too good. You know, you wonder how it is that they can look at Benghazi. Right, look at this well-timed, well-armed, well-coordinated mass murder of a visiting diplomat on the anniversary of 9-11 and conclude it's because of a YouTube video from six months ago. <laughs> You'd have to be a moron. <laughs> but the thing is, my cousin, my friend, my neighbor, my colleague isn't a moron in every other way. He's smart, decent, kind, loving, generous, and yet when it comes to these issues, how does he get to this? Here's the answer, the same answer we, we, we smack our heads in wonder. How can they look at the Middle East with this tiny liberal democracy of Israel, with its gay pride parades, with its freedom of speech and freedom of religion and peace now movement and a woman prime minister in the 1960s, surrounded by the most misogynistic, homophobic, hateful, and I do think a little bit anti-Semitic. <laughs> in Jerusalem. <laughs> you have to be a moron, but they're not. So how is this to be explained? 
explained, and here's the answer, because thinking is a hate crime. They must start and end their beliefs by saying we all want the same things. We all want to just raise our family in peace and love our children. And, well, if this is the case, if there is no difference between Islam and Judaism, or Islam and Christianity, then how do you explain the horrific terror attacks that are committed by the Muslims? If they want peace as much as the Jews do, then whatever horrors they commit must have been provoked. Why else would these lovely, peace-loving people who just want to live in peace, why would they do something so horrible? It must have been some provocation. And then the liberal starts to look down the list and can't find anything, can't find anything, can't find anything. A Jew built a house in Jerusalem. <laughs> right, they look at Benghazi, and it can't be that there's something wrong with Islam. That might just be their prejudices. Everybody wants peace, everybody wants to live in, 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 in prosperity and peace and, and love. So why would they murder our ambassador and do all these other horrible things? There must have been some provocation, and they looked down the list, and they looked down the list. A YouTube video six months ago. <laughs> That's what must have caused it. So when you ask, are they stupid? No, not, not, not the way you normally think about it. There's, there's no actual retardation there. <laughs> Maybe my cousin, but uh, <laughs> but it is a conscious choice not to think. So is that a subtle difference? Is that too subtle? And by the way, I'm not the only one who recognizes that liberals are morally and intellectually retarded at the age of five. <laughs> right? There's a reason that's five, by the way, and that doesn't mean they aren't articulate. It's just as as Thomas Sowell would say. Articulateness is a certain verbal nimbleness that allows them to elude all fact and reason. <laughs> all right, it's not that they're not marvelously clever. I work in showbiz. I'm in the entertainment industry. They are marvelously clever. But in the words of, oh my, I'm gonna forget who it is. I'll try to remember before I'm done. But it's a cleverness used to make us all stupid. <laughs> The problem is that at the age of five, they enter the kindergarten classroom. And that's when the liberal teaching establishment gets their hands on our children and tells them that it's a hate crime for them to think that every child must get a cookie. No child may have two cookies. If somebody has two cookies, they must have stolen it from the other person, or if you have a cookie, you didn't build it. build it? Why did they build it for you, and why didn't they build one for the failure? You can heckle me or talk to me or ask me questions, anything you like, just kill time until Dinesh gets here. I know who I am, I know my lot in life. And by the way, I, I'm a huge fan, I'm honored to, to be on um, just before Dinesh D'Souza. In fact, I do something that I don't do very often, I quote him in my book. For me to acknowledge that somebody else is brilliant, those of you who know me, it's, it's, it's like Rush Limbaugh saying somebody else is brilliant. <laughs> Which he said about me last week. So, um, I want to get this right. He says the multiculturalist, and I have a different word for them. I call them the modern liberals. Thomas Sowell calls them those with the unconstrained vision. The multiculturalist must become a de facto apologist for evil, for, for tyranny. After all, how do you explain the tyranny of the, of the Muslim world if every culture is equally good and equal? It is just as true that he must become an antagonist to all that is good, right, and successful. If America is nothing special, 
How did we get so rich? And Barack, we stole it. We're imperialists. It doesn't matter that we're not imperialists. In fact, America is the least imperialist major power in all of human history. Think about this. When Nazi Germany was a superpower, they tried to take over the world. When Japan was a superpower, they tried to take over the world. When France was a superpower, they tried to take over the world. When Great Britain was a superpower, they tried to take over the world. After World War II, we were not only a superpower, but Europe was decimated, Asia was in ashes, Africa was, as always, a non-starter, and the Muslim world was primitive. We held in our hands a weapon that all we had to do was go to any other nation and say, we will use this. If you don't let us take you over, they would have let us. We had that power, and we didn't even take over Canada. <laughs> Whenever we do something good, they must find an evil reason for it, so they say we invaded Iraq to steal their oil. Why would we go all the way to Iraq to steal their oil but all we have to do is go over and take over Mexico. <laughs> they got plenty of oil and it would be easy to do. There's nobody left there. <laughs> you know, and this notion that Obama is pushing that, that we need to uh, uh, make equal incomes, what's uh, income inequality is unfair, it's not right. And, and they extend this to nations as well. So America, they claim we, we use, the reason that we're wealthy and, and, and Africa is poor is because we use two thirds of the world's energy. And I say, of course we do. We have plugs. <laughs> because we stole it from the Sudanese. We don't have cable because we stole it from the Sudanese. Uh, and the Sudanese don't have cable not because we stole it from them. The Sudanese don't have cable because when you're hacking off the heads of a million of your citizens, chances are one of them may have been the cable guy. Like what, 
whatever it is you think of Henry Gates, the man is a tenured professor at Harvard University. If the liberal is as stupid as I believe him to be, how does he keep rising to the tops of his professions? And then it dawned on me. Liberals reach the tops of their professions because they enter only those professions where you don't ever actually do anything. <laughs> They don't build, they don't make, they don't construct, they don't manufacture, they don't repair, they don't sew, they don't mend. Every single profession that we associate with liberalism is all talk, but no action. And the thing is, when you don't do anything, you don't need to know what you're talking about. <laughs> Because when you don't do anything, what can go wrong? So the liberal flocks to academia, why? The academic doesn't do anything. If he could, he would, but he can't. So he teaches. It is so obvious that the academic doesn't do anything that the very name of his profession has become a synonym for not doing anything. As in, it's all academic anyway. Let's go do something. <laughs> the job of the academic is for somebody who doesn't do anything to lecture to children who don't do anything <laughs> about the people who do things and did things and the things that they did and they do. <laughs> the liberal flocks to journalism. Why? The journalist doesn't do anything. It is so obvious that the journalist doesn't do anything that you could remove his body. <laughs> and he'd still be able to do his job, which is why they're called talking heads. <laughs> the job of the journalist is for somebody who doesn't do anything to report to the people who do things. <laughs> the things that the other people who do things were doing while they were out doing things. <laughs> Why do you think the news was always on at 6 o'clock? Because that's when the people who do things came back from doing those things. <laughs> the liberal flocks to government. Why? The government doesn't do anything. The job of the government is for people like Barack Obama, and I want to thank him for being here. <laughs> and I can't wait to the debate between Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, so... Uh, <laughs> the job of the... is for people like Barack Obama, who have never done anything, to order the people who do everything to stop doing anything the way that they do those things. <laughs> Ironically, if the people who do everything don't listen to the people who've never done anything, then the people who've never done anything will put the people who do everything in jail. Where they won't be able to do anything. But where they will meet another Democratic Party constituency. <laughs> And of course, the liberal flocks first and foremost of my industry, showbiz. Why? Because in showbiz, we don't do anything. The job of the actor is to pretend to be doing the things. The actor is all talk with no action, which is interesting. Because in order to get the actor to start talking, the director yells, action. <laughs> but the second there's any action, they send the actor to his trailer to talk with his entourage, and they bring in the stuntman. <laughs> now in Hollywood, virtually every stuntman is a conservative. Why? Because <laughs> they do things. I mean, <laughs> And when you do things, your actions speak for yourself, for themselves. It is generally acknowledged that of all the people who don't do anything, the smartest 
He's the stand-up comedian. <laughs> Genius is found in the fact that not only don't we do anything, but we do it in next to no time. <laughs> As my friend Rich Voss would say, this is the only job in the world where you say to your friends, I gotta go to work. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, guys. I was actually asked to just speak a little bit about what it is you can do, and here's what I want you to do. The red light is on, and I know you guys want this to Susa because you've been very, very quiet. Oh. But you'll make it up to me by buying my book, right? Yeah. I have a program I call Adopt a Democrat. Oh. I find one person in your life who you know is not a brain-dead liberal who has just never heard what it is conservatives believe from a conservative. And I call it adopt a Democrat because it's very much like adopting a child. They are children. They truly are children. They know that they're children. They do. It's why they have a book called Everything I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. It's why Jimmy Carter doesn't call himself James. Okay, it's why Jesse Jackson talks them in rhyme. <laughs> so you find somebody in your life, because I've got to tell you, they truly do hate us. And they hate religious folk the most. Where, where are my Catholics? <laughs> See, the idea of being a liberal is, we try, as conservatives, we try to better ourselves. Liberals spend their lives just being themselves. <laughs> and you would think they would love the Catholics because you didn't even wait till you were born to start being yourself. <laughs> you were yourself in the womb. And you would think the liberals would love you for that because what is the womb? Basically, it's a liberal paradise. <laughs> right? Basically, you're sitting in a hot tub <laughs> feeding off of somebody else. second because I was feeling a little bit insulted so tell me what is it that radio talk show host does he does nothing and so do I but we know we do nothing which is why we actually prefer small government rather than That's somebody who thinks they're smarter than we are telling us what to do because at every level the decision should be made at the lowest level possible if you have a problem the first place you turn to solve it is to yourself. Can I better myself in some way? Do I need night school? Should I make a sacrifice? If you can't, you turn to your friends and your family. If they can't, you turn to your community, your church, your civic group. If they can't, then maybe you turn to government at the local level. Why? Very simple. I have, you have 100% knowledge of yourself. Your friends and your neighbors have good knowledge of you. They know if their money is being spent on, on buying you drugs or on, a, on somebody who's hit hard times and just needs a hand up. The further you get away, all the way to Washington, D.C., they have zero knowledge of you. Two, you have 100% consequences to being right or wrong. When you get to Washington, D.C., they have zero consequences. Zero knowledge and zero consequences is bad math. 